I am proud to introduce my colleague, uh, Professor Mohammed uh, Desui. Uh, he is a director of uh, the Breast and the Gynecologic Pathology Fellowship Training Program at uh, Roswell Park. Uh, ممكن الصوت علشان برضو أثناء المحاضرة كان في سايد إيشوز كده كانت بتعمل ديستيربنس. كان في ما فيش كراسي والناس واقفة متضايقة والفندق لسه ما لبش طلبهم فهم معذورين يعني. طب هم لسه واقفين برضو. ما يعني معنى كده برضو إن هيستيل في هيبقى في سايد إيشوز. دي بتعمل ديستيربنس أي ثينك فور ذا برزنتيشن. Again, he is a director of the Breast and the Gynecologic Pathology Fellowship Training Program at uh, Roswell Park Comprehensive Cancer Center, USA. Also, he is a member of United States and the Canadian Academy of Pathology, USCAP, and the International Society of Gynecologic Pathology, ISGB. The, also, uh, the Breast Journal Award. First place for the research entitled Molecular Changes Associated with Early Breast Cancer Progression. Uh, Dr. Mohammed will give us a lecture about breast lobular neoplasia. Please thank go ahead. Thank you very ahead. much. Thank you, Dr. Ahmed. And uh, I want to thank, do you hear me in the back? How about in the front? Okay. So can we dim the light a little bit, please? Can we dim the light? We can. can we dim the light a little bit, please? So thank you. I want to thank Dr. Manal and the organizing committee. Very nice meeting, and this is my second visit here to this meeting. And when I see the schedule, I said 45 minutes only. Oh my goodness, that is very low time. But thank you, Abir and uh, Sicily. I think they took very big part of my talk. So I can just put some slide here only or two. And I said, this is Dr. Uh, Shaheen said, and this is Dr. Queen said for that. But I will take you to the another aspect of you. I will take it from Europe, Ireland, UK, to the United States. We don't see the line of the, in the WH of B3, B4, B5. I don't know this. I wish I learned this. Because I, sometimes people ask me, and here we like the UK system. I agree with you. But I'm trying here my, to advocate for the US system. So I hope to uh, be successful at the end of the talk. So the talk will be about the lobular neoplasia and also the invasive lobular carcinoma, one of the special type invasive breast cancer. And in the second talk, in the second session, I will continue the special types of breast cancers. And Dr. Queen here, she said the, uh, she's talked about the metablastic carcinoma. So my talk, the second talk will be also short. So I am here on to the most of the west here at Buffalo, very close to uh, Canada. Okay, very, thank you very much for dimming the light. I think that's much better for those who maybe want to sleep a little bit because they heard this before, but the others, they can just wake up if they are not here before. So at the most west of the uh, New York, I don't consider myself as New Yorker, you know, I, I'm because at the most west, you know, of New York, because when you go to the New York City, it's completely different style of life. But in Buffalo, very quiet, we have a storm, a big storm three weeks ago. I like that storm, seven or eight, or eight uh, feet of uh, snow. I know that you don't measure with the feet, and me too. And switching my brain from the centimeter meter to uh, feet and inch is difficult a little bit. But you can consider the feet is like your feet, or uh, so this is the size. Okay, so let us go ahead to the uh, topics here. So I will talk again about the atypical lobular neoplasia, uh, uh, specifically the atypical lobular uh, hyperplasia, ALH, the lobular carcinob carcinoma in situ, and the invasive lobular carcinoma. I will talk about mainly the morphology and the immunoprofile because I know that molecular test everywhere, and when we repeat this at the end, when you go out, you forget everything. So I decided to just go with the morphology and the immunoprofile. So when we talk about the lobular uh, neoplasia, you can put both together, the ALH and the LCIS. If you don't know, and there is like core biopsy, and you don't know which of which, and the size and the fragmentation and all those, then just call lobular neoplasia. But it is the expansion and enlargement of the SNI. 
expansion and enlargement of the terminal duct lobular units of the breast. The monomorphism, the cells are similar, equal in size and shape, and the dishesion between the cells. There is no connection between the cells. The cells are discohesive, and the presence of intracytoplasmic vacuoles. So those are the main items of everything, the lobular carcinoma in situ, the invasive lobular carcinoma, and the ALH. So this is the picture here, expanded terminal duct lobular units. And we are a pathologist, so we try to imagine. When I'm telling you something, you may say, oh, it is not right, but okay, we can imagine this. We can consider this is okay. So this is the cells here, this cohesive cells. You see like certain spaces between the cells. And the cells are equal in size and shape. So this is lobular neoplasm. Could be LCIS, could be ALH, according to how much we have, how much we have in this. So this is, we'll go here. And for the ALH, this is the, the little baby of the lobular neoplasm, smaller lesion, no much expansion no much distortion. And I found this clover leaf feature is very important. It's very significant in this and may be specific. If you look at the lesion to the right there, this, you see this protrusions of the monotony, of the monotonous cells here. Looks like the clover leaf here to the left side here. And the cells, and I'm going to repeat this again, like a broken radio, this cohesion, the monomorphism. And the, and the intracytoplasmic vacuoles for this. This is much more, this is much more, but the same features. So this is the LCIS. Then you look and, the, and you, you see, you see there is no in much intervening spaces between those groups of cells expanding the terminal duct lobular units. So this is what the florid LCIS. So the florid is nothing but classic LCIS with more expansion little intervening stroma, and maybe some necrosis, some calcifications, trying to be like more DCIS, but it is not. We don't have in lobular carcinoma in situ, or ALH, we don't have any crib reform formation. We don't have any bridging. We don't have all those architectural distortion we see in the DCIS. Okay, so more than half of the SNI needs to be distended, distended, and distorted. These are the two words. If you have the board exam, you go. Distended and distorted SNI, more than half. And to be honest with you, I don't know what is more than half is more than half. So I just go, it is much, it is much, there is much there. Okay, then I call it LCIS. Less, I call it ALH. Is this matter? Yes, it does matter. Because the risk of developing breast cancer is double for ALH versus LCIS. Five-fold difference, compared to tenfold features. So do your best to do not just give them lobular carcinoma or something like that. Try to do your best to, to know more than half of the terminal duct lobular units are distended or no. So if it is less like that, low, you call it ALH, the patient has just more peace of mind here. Five-fold difference only. So the florid LCIS, I think I mentioned this, and those are the features here. Classic LCIS with more. Marked distension of the terminal duct lobular units, creating an, a confluent mass. Less intervening stroma, plus or minus necrosis. There is more trend toward more necrosis in the florid LCIS. Little to no intervening stroma, and at least 50 cells, if you have time, you are bored, you do want to do something, just to go count. If more than 50 cells across the diameter of an SNS with low intervening stroma, you are dealing with, uh, with uh, florid LCIS. I'm sorry for the light going back and forth, maybe trying to wake you up, then you go back <laughs> to sleep if you would like. Or see, uh, you can leave it alone if you, if you, if you want. If you want to just leave it, uh, see the light مفتوح. افتح النور افتح النور يعني بيفصل الواحد بيسلينا بيسلينا again another picture here for, uh, I should maybe the same picture here florid LCIS <تصفيق> هو غالبا عامل زي التاتش من غير تاتش كمان من بعيد بعيده عنه خالص انا من اسيوط طبعا دكتور احمد 
<تصفيق> فده الايه ذيس از ذي ال سي اس فلوريد ال سي اي اس مور فلوريد ال سي اي اس هير ليس انترفينينج ستروما مونوتوني اوف ذا سيلز ذيس كوهيجن انترا سايتوبلازميك فاكيولز اجين مور ال سي اي اس A little bit more intervening stroma, but the expansion here, the expansion is more. Let us go to the bleomorphic lobular carcinoma in situ. More marked nuclear bleomorphism. Simulating DCIS, as Dr. Shaheen said, uh, like DCIS, but it is not the DCIS. So this is here. But you see that the cells are discohesive. Every cell is single by itself. It looks, it looks like plasma cells or plasma cytoid cells. And the cells, there is very nice spacing in this picture. Okay, this picture for just the presentation, but in reality, you will not find this. In reality, you will find something more difficult. And sometimes we call it LCIS with bleomorphic features. That's okay, that is okay. More necrosis, more calcifications, more expansion. This is common for the bleomorphic lobular carcinoma inside. Clear cell features also, sometimes features of both classic LCIS and bleomorphic lobular carcinoma inside. More close-up view, just to waste some time and to show you the bleomorphic lobular carcinoma in situ. Bleomorphic means there is difference in size and shape, maybe four times difference, some small, some large, some medium, and so on. Can imagine. The monotony started to go away. The monotony, the only feature here for bleomorphic lobular carcinoma inside to go away is the monotony, just the difference. It's from the name itself, bleomorphic, different size and shape. And this is the study we did. We studied uh, only just 47 cases compared to Dr. Shaheen, who st sh she studied 170 something. So we studied 47 cases of bleomorphic lobular carcinoma in situ. Uh, and we have, out of those, we have 31 cases with no history of anything before. So out of those 31 cases, we have 20% with, no with no concurrent history of breast cancer uh, had local recurrence. So 20%, big number, big number, looks like DCIS, okay? All tumors on the excision, four invasive carcinomas, and the two bleomorphic lobular carcinoma in situ in the excision were found. Immunohistochemistry, everyone loves this, immunohistochemistry. Let us do immunohistochemistry. Sometimes the people are just bored. What to do? What immunohistochemistry we should do? Sometimes you don't need immunohistochemistry. And sometimes the immunohistochemistry will put you in trouble, okay? So don't do it unless you want, you expect the results. If you insist that is, is LCIS, don't do ECA adherent. Don't do anything. Because if you do ECA adherent and it is positive, what are you going to do? You call it DCIS? No. We don't diagnose with e-cadherin. We don't di we diagnose with H and E. We diagnose with morphology. And the reverse is true. If it is DCIS, you have cribriform formation, you have bridging, you have all this. And by any chance, you did by mistake e-cadherin and it is negative, leave it alone. Leave it DCIS, okay? The management is different, as we will see. So the e-cadherin, very famous, and the second is ten here. I don't know if you are familiar with this or no, guys. I don't do it much. I just did it in my training, the P120 catenin. So both of them are membranous staining in the normal situation. But in the lobular neoplasia, they are lost. Uh, I mean, the e-cadherin will be lost, and the P120 will be directed to the cytoplasm. Instead of membranous, so it will be cytoplasmic. You see it? Very brown in the cytoplasm, in the lobular neoplasia. And here, nothing in the lobular neoplasia. And don't forget, the e-cadherin will stain what? The myoepithelial cells around. And sometimes even weak staining, we call it aberrant e-cadherin stain. You see, this is the aberrant e-cadherin. If you see something like that, don't call it positive. Hey, let us go. No, this is negative or aberrant expression of e-cadherin. Still lobular carcinoma in situ. So both expression here. This is the dual staining. I did this in my fellowship training a lot. Dual staining. We, need, we do the brown and the red chromogen. One of them, e-cadherin, for example, brown, and the P120 is red. So if it is lobular carcinoma in situ, the, the, the red, which is the P20, will go to the cytoplasm, and the brown will disappear. Okay? So this is LCIS. E-cadherin went away, and the P120 
will be translocated to the cytoplasm. So let us see the upstaging or the upgrading of the LCIS and ALH. When you say upstaging up or upgrading what? Means you have biopsy, you have ALH or LCIS, then you did the excision the second day or the second week or something like that. What, what do you expect to see? What do you expect? So if the, this is the question here. What is the rate of upstaging of lobular neoplasia to invasive carcinoma or DCIS on the follow-up excision? If we did the excision after one week or two weeks, what is the chance to find invasive cancer or DCIS? So is it 0 to 10, 11 to 20, 21 to 40, almost approximately 100% or it depends? It depends, very good, excellent. So it depends on what? So it depends on the following. Here's the study Dr. Shaheen he quoted here in her presentation back in 2011 and this is the upgrading of the ALH on the, co on the excision after diagnosis of ALH on the core biopsy. You see, from zero to uh, 43. But look at the, t at the columns. Some studies have 97 cases, some studies have seven cases. Some studies may have no cases at all or something like that, but this is very different number. And the selection, and what is the excision rate? Which patients they excise and which patients they leave alone. So this is the rate will be variable. It depends on the structure of the study. And the same study here, the LCIS are staging the same from zero in some studies to 60. So it is depending on, on how many cases included, what is the risk factors, are those patients have history of breast cancer or no, and so on. For us, I did this study, so we collected 237 cases of ALH and LCIS, I called the pure. Pures mean what? The patient has nothing else. There is no ADH, no flat epithelial etibia, no history of breast cancer, no, nothing, just ALH and LCIS on the core biopsy. Then I studied the excisions of those patients. So if you like the table format, this is the upgrading the ALH cases here. So one case only uh, upgraded to invasive carcinoma, four cases upgraded to DCIS and the and the not upstaged 158 cases. If you look to the LCIS cases, the total number of the cases 74. Out of those LCIS, 4% of those upgraded to invasive cancer, 4% to another DCIS. So the upstaging is high. So it is important to know. You can just say in the biopsy, you don't know, this is lobular neoplasia. I'm sorry, I disagree with Dr. Abir, but you have to do your best. Do your best. You have the criteria and do your best to, to know, is it ALH? or LCIS on the core biopsy. Am I good on time, guys? Okay. If you like this diagram format, you don't like the table format, this is another format, the same presentation, ALH, the upgrading rate is 3.1%, and the LCIS, the upgrading rate is 8.1%. So more than double, more than double. If we, uh, we sorted the case according to the age, we divided by the 50 years old, less than 50, more than 50, you find difference in the upstaging. You see here the ALH, 2.2% for patients younger than 50 years old compared to 3.4 and so on. So look at the clinical picture. It is we are not dealing with the slides only. We are dealing with the whole patient. I know that we're looking at the microscope slides and the sh our shoes, but try to, to, to look also at the clinical history. And we don't, nobody provide this for us. Sometimes they send us just the, 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 the breast and that's it. And that's okay. When we did the study also for uh, core breast biopsy showing lobular carcinoma in situ, this is another study, I added those 237 cases, and in addition to this, I add more cases to this study to see what to do, what to do with this. So this is here, at the end, we concluded that from this study to diagnosis on the core biopsy with concordant imaging doesn't mandate surgical excision. You have to have pathologic, radiologic correlation, then you don't do anything. That's all, the diagnosis. But if there is no correlation, then excision may be warranted here. So active surveillance and the chemo prevention uh, are management options. The margin status of classic LCIS is not reported on the excision. We don't report this for bleomorphic, for classic, for anything. We don't report the margin. I'm sorry, I, disagree. I know that you are sad. But no, we don't do this. So this, we don't look at the margin because many factors and many philosophy. It is a multifocal disease, bilateral disease. So if you say the margin is positive or negative, maybe it doesn't matter for this. 
So I will give you a case presentation here, 49 years old, breast core biopsy uh, performed for calcifications. And this is the morphology here. You may have some maybe crib reforming, if you will, maybe some material in those crib reform formations. And there is a lot of monot monotonous cells in between those uh, crib reforming, if you will. So more close up view to show you here the monotony of the cells expanding the terminal duct lobular units, the calcifications and those spaces, I, I will say crib reforming for now, but I, I said in the beginning, if you have crib reforming, don't diagnose uh, lobular. So what is, what is this? More here, close up view here. So, and I can give you, and this is the ACAD hearing, by the way. So the ACAD hearing is negative on those, all those cells just highlighting and decorating the myoepithelial cells. I give you options, more close up view for the ACAD hearing to show you the negativity of the ACAD hearing. I'm not tricking you, by the way. And those are the options here you have. DCIS, crib reform pattern, adenoid cystic carcinoma, bleomorphic adenoma, atypical ductal hyperplasia, or LCIS with associated collagenous spherulosis. E, because of what? Because this is the longer answer, okay? Sometimes you go to see this is the longer answer, then you pick this, but it, it will not work all the time, okay? <laughs> Sometimes. Yes, very good. So this is the LCIS with associated uh, collagenous spherulosis. And the collagen spherulosis, all of you knows, I don't want to read the slide here, but this is a rare incidental benign finding occurring in uh, proliferative lesions like papilloma, like the UDH, and sometimes it is associated. And when you go association with anything, with fibroadenoma, with uh, collagen spherulosis, the most common association is lobular neoplasia. And you see it is little, you call it ALH. It is more, you call it what? LCIS. So this is associated with some lesions associated with calcifications in 25% of the cases. And this is the study done here, and I quoted this study for the collagenous spherulosis associated with lobular carcinoma in situ. Let us go to the invasive lobular carcinoma, because everyone likes now those uh, lesion. This is a, a subtype or a special type of breast cancer, and as I said, I, I, I continue the rest of the special types on the second talk, or most of the special type breast cancer for sure, and I may leave the rare cancer to the next year if we are alive here. So the invasive lobular carcinoma, the definition, small discohesive, again, disc, dishesive or discohesive individual dispersed cells uh, throughout a fibrous connective tissue and uh, concentric pattern around the uh, ducts, very common feature, and the thin rim of cytoplasm with occasional intracytoplasmic lumen or vacuoles and mitosis and the lymphovascular invasion, very rare in these lesions. So this is the classic picture. I show you this for the presentation because I have to present this. A lot of uh, cells, like single filing of cells. Every cell looks like each other, like brothers and sisters, okay? And maybe there is plenty of cytoplasm, maybe some vacuoles and the discohesion between the cells here. But this is what we see in reality, what we see in practical life. Some cells dispersed here and there, and if you are at the end of the day, you may say benign, next case. Let us go, okay, to catch before the, the traffic or something like that. So this is what we see. But here they, the plasma cytoid feature, the vacuoles, this, the, the dis dispersion of the cells among this sclerotic stroma not dysmoblastic reaction, just the regular stroma and those cells. So this is the most common we see. This is also a common feature, single filing, single filing. Sometimes you call it vertebral column-like, verte like the vertebral column. And uh, the dishesion, again, I repeated these words many times. You say what, uh, just he came all the way to say dishesion, dishesion, but this is what it is, okay? And uh, again, here you see the cells here, sometimes you present with this, the single filing of cells to call classic invasive lobular carcinoma more of the same, invasive classic lobular carcinoma. More of the same, you are bored now. More pictures, more pictures. So invasive lobular carcinoma has some, some variants. Not everyone agrees on this. I worked before at Vanderbilt University, one of the universities in the, in the south, and they dis, uh, acknowledge this. They don't say either classic or no. 
but many others they I, and all the times I, I i you know i said no we have to do this because this is in the who i like the who book except the line of the b2 and the b3 but the rest of the book i like everything so this is a, a, a solid and alveolar better again non-cohesive and the small cells of lobular morphology but these cells grow in sheets grow in nests with some uh, higher frequency of mitosis than the classic type alveolar pattern arranged in globules okay at least 20 cells globules with some fiber a thin fibrovascular stroma around them so this is the picture here you see the dishesion again but there is those species like globules you can call it solid pattern or alveolar pattern or just call it invasive lobular carcinoma and that's all if you are in doubt, you do the immunohistochemistry, more close-up view to show the dishesion. Everything is single by itself, you see, and the space around them. Then the bleomorphic invasive carcinoma. Bleomorphic, the same, like the in situ, but invasive. There is no basement membrane around. So again, greater degree of bleomorphism, four times the size of lymphocytes, and the four times difference in size and shape. Okay, higher mitotic rate and the signet ring cells could be fitted in this group. Because the WHO dropped now the signet ring carcinoma. You have to do something when you do the new book, okay? And this year we drop the signet ring and we have some agreement. Okay, let us drop the signet ring this, uh, 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 this time and the next time I will leave it for you. And so on, because we don't, that the prognosis the same and the treatment is the same. Sometimes you see why we bother. We bother just for many reasons. One of them is job security, just to have, say, we are a pathologist. You see, you give us small room. Most of the people are standing there because we are pathology, just not, see, not sitting on the driving seat. But we will do it one day, okay, with your help. Okay, bleomorphic, invasive bleomorphic uh, carcinoma, okay? more bleomorphism. Cells are very big, cells are some small, difference humongous here. More of the same. This is something like that. Prominent nucleoli and uh, difference in size and shape. Bleomorphic lobular carcinoma. There are, we have rare patterns of invasive uh, lobular carcinoma. The tubulo lobular carcinoma, admixture of tubular pattern and invasive, classic invasive lobular carcinoma. Lobular carcinoma in situ is observed in most of those cases. And hist histiocytoid morphology, another variant, histiocytoid uh, pattern, mixed groups is common theme. You will find histiocytoid classic bleomorphic next to each other's, so to make it more fun. This is tubulo lobular carcinoma. And I will tell you a trick here in those cases. And sometimes when they ask me to send questions to the board exam, I send this question, I send this case. Anyone going to the board, you have one answer maybe correct here. So when you do the ECA adhering for those, it is positive in all the cells, positive in the lobular and the tubular and everything. This is one of the trick, and I specifically send this question because I have experience with this. When I do ECA adhering, positive, but it is classic. You see the targetoid pattern around the lobules. When you do ECA adhering, it's positive. What are you going to call it? Call it still tubular lobular carcinoma, okay? More close-up view here. The tubules here and the invasive lobular here, and, and this is the tubular lobular carcinoma. Histiocytoid variant. Sometimes you say is, this is like histiocytes. Let us do the CD68. Let us do the, do the keratin also. Keratin is your friend. Keratin is your friend. Just to do keratin. Keratin most, most probably carcinoma. There is sarcomas most for keratin, yes, for sure. There is lymphomas most for uh, keratin, yes, for sure. So the, as I said in the beginning, we are not diagnosing with immunohistochemistry. We diagnose, we diagnose with morphology, histiocytoid variant of invasive lobular carcinoma. If you do the ACAD hearing on this, we'll be negative on this. Okay, more histiocytoid and the classic, um, and this may be in situ, I'm sorry to put this picture here, but I just want to show you the histiocytoid variants of this. Okay, and you do the, uh, and the more of the same here, maybe bleomorphic carcinoma, or maybe this like apocrine features, I don't know where I put this slide from, leave it alone, and this is the lymph node metastasis. Sometimes the lymph node metastasis will not go the classic type. In the lymph node, you will find this, nested pattern and the tumor there is what classic invasive lobular carcinoma see this is most commonly the invasive lobular carcinoma do that go to the lymph node and send this uh, pattern of growth uh, biomarkers 
the classic in this developer carcinoma are usually ER positive, usually ER positive, 90 something, 98 or 97% or so. If it is negative, you stand up and you wait. And you say, am I right? Is this right? Okay, this is the classic type. The PR is in 60 to 70% of cases positive. HER2 is usually negative. Do I see cases positive? For sure. If there is no cases positive, we will not do the stain. But there is, but very rare, okay? So this is the main profile. ER positive, PR positive, HER2, negative classic. If you go to the bleomorphic invasive lobular carcinoma, you will find the variety here. You will find less ER positivity. Only ER positive in 10% of the cases. Most probably negative. And evid evident HER2 positivity here. So when you do the bleomorphic, it is like triple negative, if you will, if you will. But there is some component of positive HER2. Molecular here, as I said, I'm not going to, 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 to uh, bombard you with a lot of molecular, but the loss of the expression of the cell adhesion molecule E cadherin. The gene itself is, is defective, then the protein is defective. I think I'm done, and this is the Raswell Bark here, Cancer Institute. We have a pathology uh, department, 20 pathologists, and I am doing the breast and GYN. There I am the GYN, mainly GYN, but I do breast also, and I have a training in breast and GYN. We have a new fellowship program for one year, breast and GYN fellowship, and we have also the international program I created, and we have the first candidate, Lubna Abdel Fattah, we have with us this year, study for three months there. If you are interested to do this program for three months uh, uh, or more, if you do well, just contact me. Have my email address here and my phone number, my real address, everything you can hunt me to find, and I'm more than happy to help if you are interested to join this fellowship program well-constructed fellowship program. If you want only breast as Lubna, you do breast only. If you do GYN only, do GYN only. If you just want to enjoy the site there and the snow, just come. Thank you very much.